All right, guys, welcome back for another video. I know I've been absent for a while, um, really been caught off guard by the whole FTX saga. Um, now, whatever you think about the uh, FTX situation in the crypto markets, you know, I, I think of that as a black swan event, right? It's kind of disconnected from what's going on in the broader markets and, um, you know, having an impact on the crypto market specifically. But there's a lot of bullish stuff going on in the equities market, um, the broader markets, the credit markets as well that I want to talk about. Um, and kind of just do a broad market overview and tie it into Bitcoin at the end. Uh, so what I want to talk about is the RSI. You know, I, I know I've been tracking this for a while, but you can see here you get, you get one little slight, uh, you know, divergence here. But then you really get your big divergence right here on this lower low right here. See that right there. I mean, uh, this is kind of what I've been talking about for a while, but now we're finally getting it confirmed. Um, you know, you have to go back pretty far to find uh, this type of read on SPY, right? I mean... I'm trying to find a read like that. I mean, you really have to go back, you know, uh, quite a while. I mean, back at least to 2016. Um, you know, this is the type of thing where people, you know, their psychology isn't going to line up with it at this phase of the market, um, but it never does, right? It's, it's always the same every time. Um, and I want to kind of, you know, we'll be talking about the, about the EMAs. Uh, you can see that the stochastics are crossing up on this uh on that on the SPY uh, weekly stochastics crossing out of the critical zone coming up. Now, see what's going on on the EMAs. Uh, you got your EMA, your 21 and, and 34. Nothing special there. Um, if you are trading this as a trending model, you would be looking at this as you know just continuation. Um, but again, we don't we don't have this uh, bottoming structure that we have right here. Uh, so what I want to talk about is kind of keep these lines on the chart and kind of work my way down to the different time frames and show you how they kind of work within each other. So you've got the same concept on the three day. It's not enough low enough of a time frame relative to a daily to get a different read. But here again, now what I want to pay attention to is these are the weekly lows that we identified, right? And the weekly RSI. And you can see how you're getting the divergence here. You don't see it on the daily, but we just talked about it on the weekly. But you can see how you're getting the same type of read on the daily chart as you get wedged into this level, right? So you get wedged into, here's your weekly divergence, getting wedged into a daily divergence. You got this low here, then this low here, then this low here. So it's kind of getting pushed into this area right there. Now, if we go down to the four hour, do we have the same type of effect here? Um, we do actually, you can see the lows here, the lows right there. Um, Close right there, wedging into this area. Now, a four hour for a, a, you know something like SPY is not that different than you know daily, just because really the, it doesn't trade much more than you know four hours in each trading session uh, for traditional markets. Now, what do we see if we go down to an hourly chart? Just keeping an eye on this level. Um, again, we don't really see anything too different there. Um, you know, just but you can see here that this is you know, your uh, proverbial bottom right there. So we can mark this off on, uh, let's see. Thursday, October 13th. Now you can, you know, spec speculate what is the significance of Thursday or October 13th. Um, who knows really, but that is the bottom that we're looking at the market. And when you get something like that in the market, right, you don't want to really get caught up in looking at, oh, historical price action. This is when trending uh, trend traders kind of get caught off guard because, you know, they um, they don't really they don't really realize when the market has pivoted and turned around. Now, if you remember, we've kind of I've kind of talked often about how the quarterly open tends to serve as a pivot. So really what this level lines up with is really the, the quarterly open. Right. So if we mark this off can mark this off right here. Um, you got your quarterly open in October. So basically the first trading day of October was right here. So you have a couple trading days, basically a handful of trading days before you get that market bottom put in. And then you get your quarterly pivot marked by the RSI divergence and other factors I've talked about. Now, when that happens, then you get a change in behavior. Uh, so what I really want to do is mark this level off. You know, we're kind of past that. And so I'll use this bottom that we identified 
as the anchor on the left hand side of my chart. Um, now, of course, you know, we're going to reference historical price action, but for the most part, uh, what you're seeing is a new change in behavior, right? You're seeing the exponential moving averages cross the upside. You got 21 over your 34 and things are starting to move, right? You're starting to get that push up. Same deal on the four hour. You can just tell that, you know, uh, things are changing around, right? You're getting a new quarterly uh, change in behavior. So with that in mind, right, the quarterly changed around at the beginning of Q4, October 4th, um, bouncing off the exponential 21 on the quarterly right here, um, which is kind of where it came off in March 2020. With that in mind, you know, with that change in behavior in mind, I would expect the quarterly to, you know, continue uh, to rally into the close. Uh, so we're right now in the middle of the fourth quarter. It's November 15th. Um, we, you know, we've got another month and a half. So I would expect, you know, expect is not the best word. But I would look for a price to roughly um, continue that change in behavior into the Q4 close, um, which is going to come in, you know, really uh, kind of a while from now, in, at least in the way the market operates, right? Um, so we'll, we'll reframe this, put it back on the weekly chart. You've got your quarterly open there. You know, really what I would look for, and if you're looking at this from the perspective of liquidity, then, um, you know, I would expect for the market to run uh, four stops above these highs right here sometime within uh, Q4. Um, again, why, why do I pick that level? Well, this is the obvious significant high, historical high. Um, a lot of people have stop loss orders up there. The market, all the market has to do to get that liquidity is run just above that level, stop these people out, and boom, you got instant liquidity right there. And really, that's just what I'm looking at. Now, this is fueled by a reversal in the dollar. So let's go to the dollar currency index. The dollar currency index for people who are obviously probably speaking to the choir, but it is a measure of the dollar versus other currencies, primarily the euro and the yen. Now, it's been going parabolic. I mean, it's just been going absolutely parabolic uh, for all of this year. Chasing rates, remember, uh, for Forex markets, uh, capital chases yield. So as the dollar is rising in interest rates, uh, capital is chasing those yields. Not only is uh, uh, were interest rates rising, but they were also rising um, relative to other fiat currencies, right? So a lot of other fiat currencies, you know, their rates were remaining low. So you have a combination of not only interest rates rising, but interest rates rising and diverging significantly from other fiat currencies that the dollar is measured against. So you see that going parabolic. And we actually see, I would argue that we see a reversal. Now, remember, we talked about the uh, RSI on the, you know, for the equities, but you got the same uh, type of structure right here, right? You've got uh, multiple uh, drives of divergence right here. And right? And then you get the gauntlet drops down, right? It's now this may not look like a lower high, but it actually is. If you zoom in uh, very closely, we can, we can just see that um, you got to go way in, but you can see that this is actually a lower high relative to this high. So it is divergence, although it doesn't look like it zoomed out. It is. So just for the purposes of our analysis right here, uh, I just want to show the same thing going on with equities is going on with the dollar, but in reverse. Um, so you get your break below um, really these lows right here, or actually this low right here is kind of uh, where it's confirmed at least a weekly top on the on the weekly. Once you <clears throat> you know you, you kind of base off there for a little bit, you get a bit of a stop run, and then next one through is your full body candle close below. You know uh, volume is not really reliable in the forex markets, but uh, you see that heavy bottom candle. Now let's do the same thing we did with equities on the dollar currency index. So let's see, if we go to the daily, do we have divergence? Not really. You can you kind of just see this uh, parabolic peak right here uh, with the weekly divergence, you know, coming again. This takes a long time. Remember, you get weekly divergence starting to be put in in May 2022 um, all the way to September. But when you see that being put in the chart, you know, it's not if you tried to short the top right here, right, is an automatic, like, I'm going to get leveraged short, you would have got blown out, right? This is the thing that takes a lot of time. But when you see it forming in the market, it's kind of a sign to, 
to be a little bit more cautious, right? And maybe enter you know a, a different you know model. Maybe if you're accumulating, maybe change it up a little bit. Distribute it doesn't mean flip 100, percent but just start to be open to the possibility that things are you know starting to change around a little bit. And ultimately, that's what we're seeing happening now, right? You're seeing these, this uh, change of behavior. Uh, so while we didn't get a daily divergence, you do get you know your third drive of weekly divergence, and then also you know at the at the very very top, right, you get this uh, divergence as well, this high, this parabolic peak right there, divergence. So this is actually your absolute peak right here, and we can we can do that and zoom in on that, you know, kind of like we did on the weekly um, for equities. But let's see. So you've got that's your absolute top, and you can see right here this low basing off this level right here on the weekly, right? You what it, you know. You, whether you're using this high or this high right there, we can mark both of them off. Uh, they're both valid, but uh, you get the idea, right? Price comes down, hits the peak, bases off this level, bounces up. Now, if we go down to the daily chart, you can see that, right? Coming down in here, bouncing up. This is probably a 618 retracement off the off the lows, roughly. You know, and and then you see you know this, the same type of pattern. Uh, you get the same distribution pattern playing out right there. But then what's happening on the daily? Well, the daily, if we go to the EMAs, the EMAs are starting to show the exact same um, feature that we saw in equities, just another way around, right? You see the peak being put in, um, you see structure being broken to the downside, and you see the 21 exponential moving average crossing below the 34 exponential moving average. Um, and it's just showing you that, you know, uh, it, this is a, a parabolic blow up, right? I mean, if, if you're looking at a, one of the fundamental realities of every market is that every parabolic, uh, ascent always blows off, right? It gets, it gets more dramatic, more dramatic until it blows off. And, uh, psychology of course, chases the whole run up, right? So. Uh, psychology is getting even more dramatic as well. And then you get people piling into the parabolic top. And of course, you know, market changes around. Things change. Things don't last forever. Um, but it is interesting that it's also coming in around the quarterly open, right? So we can mark the same theory off, you know, that we did for the for equities. You know, we did see that pivot kind of come in, uh, you know, recently. Not as recent as equities, a little bit uh, less recent than that, but you know, coming in around the um, the quarterly open, for the most part. Uh, so you know, we get the peak was set in you know just before the quarterly open, um, but you can see you you get that quarterly open. We got to move it right here, right uh, October first, and you get a change of behavior around that quarterly open. So again, within the context of what I'm talking before. So you get the change in behavior, the peak put in, the weekly bullish or weekly bearish divergence confirmed, break of market structure when this low here got broken. Uh, a lot of times the first break of market structure will be a liquidity run up into a 618 retracement like you've got here. And then you get that confirmation. You get Then you get the volatility starts to come in and then uh, exponential moving averages turn around. So just illustrating that this is a change in behavior. It's different than what we've seen before. And with the quarterly open pivot in mind, uh, I do think that, you know, we'll probably see uh, a little bit of trend continuation going into that uh, quarterly close, not only the quarterly close, but also the yearly close. Um, now let's tie this all back into Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin has not been following the broader markets beautifully uh, due to the Sam Bankman free collapse. Um, so, you know, a lot of things have been going on here. Um, you know, this chart does not look is uh, nearly as strong as equities. I mean, this is you know, it, it's it's not good, right? Um, <laughs> this is not good. Uh, not what you want to see. Um, I mean, the weekly is still putting you know putting in this divergence, but remember, you don't have divergence until you confirm a low. So. Until this low is confirmed, you, you just don't have anything on, on the RSI. Um, you know, and it did look like things were starting to break out here. Um, and really, it did look like the, a bottom was being put in here. But, of course, we got the uh, Black Swan event. And, uh, you know, things are a little bit different now, right? 
Um, now it'll be interesting to see how Bitcoin uh, holds up against.